know, I never thought that I'd be running a llama park, but now that we've actually got it, it feels very, very natural. I realised that um, working for somebody else wasn't, wasn't for me, so I just went out on my own. I'm the one with the um, big animal licence because I have a, a British Horse Society qualification. The Shook family bought the Llama Park three years ago after returning to England from Sri Lanka where they had a history of fruit farming. Before that, they had previously ventured all over the world for their various careers. Uh, we bought the Llama Park three years ago in May um, the 13th, which was my 60th birthday. So we used to joke that um, what do you give a woman for her 60th birthday is 35 llamas, 40 alpacas and a lot of work. At the Llama Park, the eccentric owner Bobby runs the day-to-day -day operations. We needed somewhere to live, a house, we needed a field and the Llama Park had a house and um, quite a lot of fields and um, so we decided that that was what the place would be. I've always hated zoos. The zoo in Dubai was absolutely repulsive. It was awful. Concern for animal welfare has always been something that both my wife and I have um, you know, been very concerned about. We, we haven't brought in any animals that require um, the zoo licence or anything like that. Bobby and Susan's daughter Lily also works at the park. And I literally just got a call from uni one day saying they decided to buy Llama Park. But I am um, heading off to do my own thing in a few months because obviously you think your parents buy this lovely business and say you can run it if you want but it's not your choice. It's also an absolute nightmare living and working with your parents. Pat, the Livestock and State Manager, runs guided llama walks around the park every day with his team, letting visitors get some hands-on time with the unusual animals. Initially started working here as a work experience placement and have slowly worked my way up to the uh, managerial role of the Livestock and Estates Manager. So as part of that, uh, my job is to make sure that the park is maintained, as well as all the animals and um, and the guests that come to the park are kept happy and full of food um, and kept nice and clean as well and watered when they need to be too, which is every day. I'm Pat, I'm going to be your guide this morning. We're going to take out a group of llamas with us. As you can see, the llamas are quite large animals, so they can be a little bit daunting to some people, but they are super friendly and super docile when they need to be. We always lead our llamas from the right-hand side, um, it's just the way that we've always done it and in doing so you guys kind of help out with our training as well. So, as you can see, Freddie's quite calm to just stand next to me here. Um, they're not a big fan of having their faces and ears touched, but you do have plenty of neck and plenty of back to have a stroke of. So, if your llama's getting too close and in your personal space like this, then feel free just to push it away. If you want it a little bit closer, then bring it a little bit closer <laughs> and they'll come and give you some affection like this, alright? So as well as llamas, we've got two donkeys, two miniature Shetlands, uh, seven guinea fowl, which are going off in the background. Uh, we've got 20 free range chickens that roam around the park, uh, stealing people's pi picnics and all the food that they drop. Um, we've also got eight geese, four turkeys, six ducks, two reindeer, uh, 12 pigs at the moment. Um, and we've also got our goats, sheep, and our lovely alpacas too. Even among a herd of such unusual creatures, there are some standout characters. Teddy's uh, he's one of my favourite llamas that we've got here at the park. He's an Olympic winning jumping llama. Um, he can jump quite high, um, high fences and gates and roams free around our park. He'll jump the fence and he'll run back down to the bottom of the park where he'll hang out with the female llamas or our sheep.
Before the shucks, the park only had llamas and some reindeer. Now it has a vast variety of animals, as well as a gift shop and restaurant. Though we're stuck in the middle of Ashdown Forest, people will come from Brighton and come from London to buy alpaca and handmade pewter jewellery and pure wool items because you simply can't get them in the high street. This was a bit more than we bargained for, really, because it's seven days a week full on, very hard work. Um, so really what we were bringing um, to the business was um, interest in big animals, in uh, being able to do our own publishing and marketing without having to pay another company to do it, and Bobby's the same. We had a granddad came one day and he was dressed in full safari outfit with his grandchildren. And uh, we put our wild llamas down at the bottom of the park because they're not ready to be um, sociable with people. And Grandad decided that he would be um, very intrepid and took the children down to the bottom of the park and managed to get through the electric fence. And our stud llama, our stud alpaca, took a fancy to Grandad. And Grandad ended up with the stud alpaca's two front legs wrapped around his head. And his grandchildren were absolutely traumatised. They were only five or six, so they didn't actually understand what was going on. But that's a sort of, that's not too unusual, things like that happening. <laughs> Whilst things are going well at the Llama Park, there are some differing opinions about what's next. I'd love to have a festival here. I think it's a perfect venue. We've got the licences for the music and the alcohol. We've got the licence for camping. And, you know, I just think it's such a beautiful spot and you know, I, mean, I don't know how the animals would be, but not a huge festival, it's just also around here there's loads of local talent. We'd really like to encourage more groups of children to come and visit, um, whether it's school groups or cubs and guides and things like that. Um, I think the important thing for us outside is that we educate children into, to the other side of the world really, so not every child is exposed to the, sort of the country lifestyle. Because I've always worked for my parents since I was young, since I was like little, they used to let me make teas and coffees and stuff. I mean, it's such a beautiful place to work and it's such a beautiful place to live. It's just very easy to get overwhelmed sometimes when, you know, you're, you're used to being away and doing your own thing. So I think I'd just like to go and learn, even if I just learn, you know, working in other restaurants, working in other shops, working um, with other animals, and I can apply it all back here one day. My dad has to do the business side of things. It's not that he prefers it. He doesn't prefer sitting in an office to being outside with the animals. If my dad had his way, he'd be out there all the time. We all would, that's, that's the best bit, having the land and, and you know, when we've had animals put down or anything, my dad's been right there and sees them very much as his animals and feels very connected and is so hands-on with everything. The problem is, is that someone has to do all the, the slog work. Obviously he's, you know, older and I'm younger, so I'm a little bit, I'm a lot less willing to, you know, shout and I get a lot more shy with dealing with that and I'm much softer. But sometimes that means that staff will, for example, approach me because they'll know that I can talk to him. So I think, and they approach my mum as well because he's just so busy. Mum and I also create that buffer for him. I mean, I wouldn't say under any circumstances that I could run this place on my own at all. It's more just knowing what my dad would like done in a situation if he's not here. I mean, they have to go on holiday sometime, so when they do go away, having me here, they just kind of know that the decisions I would make are obviously in the best interest of our family as well as our business. And the next area for development will, will be to go into evenings. At the moment, we're only open from 10 in the morning till 5 um, in the afternoon, but we, we are looking to open in the evenings. We see great potential in this area. It's barren of trees. We want to plant trees. We want to um, build all sorts of lovely little nooks and crannies for people to sit, fountains. We're talking about putting in a, um, you know, um, a well with water running all through the park uh, and creating streams and fountains and all that sort of thing. So we've still got a very exciting future ahead of us. Mm -hmm.